teaching for us. And this is how Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us to follow the teaching of Jesus. Peace be upon him. This is actually the uh, theological part of it. Now we'll go to something else. Can we go together? Yes. Let's go. Uh, go on. We talked yesterday about the third one, third one. About commonly shared values. If you look at these three images, the one in blue is my individual principle. The one on the right is your individual principle. We have to respect. I respect your privacy, your individual principle, and you respect mine. But in the middle, which is the majority, is the commonly shared value. When we look at both of them, but the majority of what we have is commonly shared. When we start respecting one another, then agreeing on our differences, we can develop this green in the middle, which is newly developed values. Newly developed values will be only developed when we start to share our commonly shared value and respect one another. It's not just something we get some people to speak about it, it's something will come out of our partnership working together. Next, please. This is another thing which is, we mentioned about the Ten Commandments and we mentioned about the five, uh, 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 what do you call it, five fundamentals of Islam, which is Muqasid al-Sharia. What is the difference? It's very minimum. But, but, some of our teachers are politicizing our religion, are politicizing, politicizing our religion, or some of our teachers are ignorant of our culture and our shared values, because they don't look at the society as a whole. They look at their own sect, their own society, not the, uh, uh, the, the greater society. So this is coming to us because of the political desire of the leaders. It could be driven by the political decision of one country or another. The new humanitarian values, which I mentioned about it, we have to respect our differences, we have to agree on our shared values, then we have to produce later on the newly developed humanitarian values. One of the first fundamental of this, no, I'm, I'm, I'm somebody who is very funny. I can sing to you, all McDonald has a farm in Arabic, His Royal Highness has a farm, Ia Ia O, okay, and you can sing with me. This is my acronym. The fundamental for partnership is to plant a tree. The tree is trust, respect, engage, and empower. This is the fundamental for our partnership. We have to trust one another, then we have to respect one another, then engage in the work and empower one another. <laughs> These three will bear fruits. One of them is the fat kiss. I give you the fat, you give me the kiss. Okay, she knows now. It is the relationship between the donor countries, the international organization, and the local organizations. The international organization has to fundraise, advocate, and train. The local organization has to provide the knowledge-based, sustainable, innovative, sustainable solution. And here, the partnership is equal footage. Not because you have the money that you are better than me, but because I am in Africa and in Europe and America, and you have the money that you are better than me. No. My know-how is as good and precious as your money. So this kind of fat case has to be built on equal footages. We are equal as local community and the international community. This is the first fruit of our tree. The second fruit, I call it a hope. Our humanitarian partnership should be based on alternative operational engagement. Alternative operational engagement. If you want really to build partnership between local communities in Africa and Asia and Latin America and others, we have to find all the time alternative ways of our operational engagement. Money is not a solution. Money is a part of the solution. 
But the operational engagement between the international organizations and the local one is what we needed to happen. And you can see my tree now, I've got fat case and the hope. And look at this. To conclude with the last statement, I'm going to give you some, some examples. Look at the arrow. There's a missing stone in this palace. And this is the teaching of Muhammad, who was complementing the teaching of Jesus, peace be upon all of them. said, the resemblance of myself as Prophet Muhammad and the other prophets from me, like somebody built this beautiful palace, apart from this corner stone. And every passenger look at the palace and saying that how grateful, how beautiful, how magnificent such a palace, but if to complete it with this stone, I am the stone. So he is recognizing the teaching of others who came before him. He is complimenting their teaching and their message because all the messages came from God. And this is the complementarity between the teaching of Muhammad وسلم, and teaching of Jesus, Moses, Abraham and the rest of prophets all together. Let me give you some practical examples. Okay, after talking about uh, the theory, okay. When we wanted to work in Sudan, in South Sudan, we have to go to discuss, this 2003, to discuss it with the government in the north, in Khartoum, and the government in the south, in Nevasha, in uh, Kenya. And we have to tell one another that we are going to work in both areas. Both governments agreed. That's why we managed to meet both of them in Warab, in Waw, in Malakal, in Juba, okay? as well as in Khartoum, the Mazin and the others. If you want to have this kind of partnership, we have to involve the governments. To tell the governments what's our plan and what we need to do. In a very difficult area, who was protecting Islamic reform as the chairman of Islamic reform in the good old days? It was the Christian in the south. Okay. Telling them, this is our organization. Okay. Because they trusted us. We did not want to start with a project which can be seen as proselytizing. Okay? That's why we started with water projects. And we started to cover the need of the people in Warar, in Wau, on the water uh, 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 need. This is one project we did. To try to say that actually it's not just something I, uh, uh, that we do it because we are in the offices. I mentioned yesterday our relationship with Caritas and with Scaffold. It started because of the CEO of, of, of Caffold came to us. The credit has to go to Caffold. And it goes on from a country to a country, from a time to a time, from a project to a project. Transparency, okay. inclusivity, partnership are what we need to ask on operational level. So if I give another example, we're organizing a conference in Egypt three years ago, a civil society conference, one of the largest conferences. I was the chairman of the conference. Who was the spokesman of the conference? She was a Coptic Orthodox lady. Now she's a member of the parliament, of the elected parliament. At that time, she was. Who was the two vice chair? One of them was Anglican, and the other one was Muslim. Who was the treasurer? For the conference was a Catholic from Caritas. This to show the mosaic of the composition of the community. We cannot exclude anyone, but we have to include everybody to address the society. Complementarity, partnership are the foundation of humanity and humanitarian work. I will stop at that moment because I don't want to take too much of your time. Uh, and thank you very much for inviting me. And thank you for listening to me. And I feel that I have not added anything to you. Let me introduce myself before I go. I'm not a professional. I'm not a theologian. I'm not an academia. I'm not whatever it is. I am a field operational worker. This is what I am and I identifying myself to be. Thank you.
Merci, professeur.